broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios. I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and you're listening to In the House. For those of you who are just finding us in the house as a podcast about the major systems in the house, electrical, plumbing, heating, air conditioning. Each week, I'm joined by a panel of experts. We pick a topic and we discuss it. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value. This week, we're going to be talking about the drains in your home, uh, how they work, what they're made of, how to maintain them, and what to do if we end up with a slow or blocked drain. Uh, today, I'm joined by the management team of the drains and sewer department at Any Hour Services, Matt, Jesse, and Chasen. Je- gentlemen, <laughs> thanks for joining me. Thanks Glad for having here. us. Yep. Uh, let's dive right in. Uh, tell me this. How do you explain to someone the parts or what makes up the drainage system? So the drainage system in the house is basically the way I describe it is once you see the water, after you've seen it, it's going into the drain system. So once you've used it, it's switching that system. It's made up of a lot of different things, P-traps, uh, tons of different fittings, elbows, a lot of different kinds of pipe. Um, there's a lot of different pieces to that system. All of them work together to get the water one direction outside of your house and gone and out of sight, out of mind. Okay. Go ahead, Matt. One of the things that uh, the typical house they all have in common is this is not a pressurized system or a pump system. And so... This is all ran off of gravity and slope. And so vents, gravity and slope, this works power outage, um, doesn't need any kind of mechanical help at all. So Cool. So um, other parts of the system that make up the drain. So the thing that most people are going to be familiar with are the drains themselves, the holes at the bottoms of the sink, the toilets, uh, you know, the bathtubs, showers. Um, is there Are there any other components that so you've got the pipes that take everything out is there any are there any other components that make it work so the beauty of a drain system is a simplicity and so most commonly the pipe is going to be what is doing most of the work there are circumstances where there may be a pump there may be a trap of a different variety there may be a lot of other things um, backflow preventers things like that but most of a drain system is made of pipe um, besides the pipes that take the stuff away, how important are the vent pipes? Vent pipes are important. They, they serve two purposes. Um, one is to allow water to, or sorry, air to flow over the water as the water flows through the pipe. It's no different than taking a bottle, flipping it totally upside down, and the air has to gurgle up through the water in order to fill the space in the bottle that the water leaves behind. When you tip it sideways and it can flow with air going over at the same time, it's much smoother. So that's one purpose is allow air to transfer over the top of the water. The other and arguably equally important is for methane gas to be able to escape the house in a safe manner outside of the house rather than methane gas being able to get into the home where it's where people have access to breathe it. Not only outside the house, typically up to where it is out of the harm of people and, and um, windows and, and put into a safe area. Uh, the, the way I like to picture a drain line and, and where it's working properly with the vent is you've got the bottom of your pipe with water flowing down it going one direction and at the top of your pipe you have air flowing the other direction and so you have multi-direction flow in the pipe but one you are seeing the liquids go and the air is going the opposite way allowing it to move if that if you can picture that. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I like to think of, you know, Chasen made the comment about turning the, turning the, uh, the bottle upside down, but I think all of us as a kid have taken the straw and put a, put our finger over it, pulled it up out. And then when you remove the finger, then the water can flow. And whenever there's a problem with the venting, uh, you have a problem with the water flow. And that sometimes can be one of the things that cause, uh, you know, blockages or backups if you, if you don't have the right, uh, amount of water flowing because like Matt was saying, uh, this is a good segue into it. We'll talk a little bit more about how the system works. It's gravity fed. You know, you're, you're using the slope of the pipe, the weight of the water and the, the velocity and the momentum of that water to evacuate everything that's going down the drains. But, uh, talk, talk to us a little bit more about how, uh, the drains work. Venting is very important. And I would say that 99% of the time, if not more, it's not the cause of a blockage. 
Um, like, like you just mentioned, the rush of water going through there, the most common cause of a blockage in a lot of more specific ways, but is that rush isn't able to happen for some reason. Something's obstructing it. Commonly, it's hair in the bottom of a shower or cosmetic buildup in the bathroom sink or um, very, very often goop, sludgy buildup inside the pipes underneath the kitchen sink, which usually grab other pipes as well. Um, and so blockages are formed from basically anything other than water that gets into that pipe, including the oils of your skin, the cosmetics from your lotions, makeup, soaps, all that kind of stuff builds up inside those pipes, not allowing that rush of water to go through. How else does it work? So as Matt was saying, you know, you have the, the water, the waste that goes down the bottom of the pipe one direction in your air so when you get your blockage you usually have waste that fills the entire pipe so neither water can go down or air can go up and then there's there's your blockage so it may not be the vent itself that's causing the uh, backup or blockage or whatever it's the uh, obstruction in the pipe that's taking the venting away and so you if you've got an obstruction you know way down your drain line exiting the home you know, all of the drain lines in the home are now backed up because none of them can really properly vent at that point. So it, it can be any anything from just your sinks backed up and that one can't vent, or it can go all, like I said, it can go all the way outside, make a clog, and now everything's backed up because nothing can vent. So, um, so we're talking a lot about like what can cause blockages and stuff, but when we talk about um, how the system works uh you know we talked about the fact that there's not there's not a mechanism it's all gravity fed uh you've got the slope of the pipes that contribute to that water uh going out but i don't know if a lot of people realize but all of the if you think about the drains in your home think about a a tree the trunk of a tree and then as you go up you've got the branches and the smaller branches that come off of that but everything comes back to that main trunk. The drains in our homes are the same way all the way up in the master bedroom or in, you know, uh, from the shop, every, all of these branch lines of the drains that are going, they all start to kind of come back together and consolidate almost like little feeder rivers into like, you know, the Mississippi or the Missouri where they all kind of feed in and you've got this one main, uh, everything comes together at what we call the main line that is eventually connects to the city that then like, talk to me about that process. It goes from like when you flush something, like where does it all end up? Like talk to me about how the drains in our homes work. Well, before we get started on that, because I think uh, we started off on parts and, and what are the parts of the of the drain system, and then we kind of, because parts have so much to do with how they work, and we got off on that, but one of the main components that I think we jumped over or didn't touch hard enough is the P-trap, because we've talked about slope, and we talked about vent, and we talked about the flow of the water in the pipe, but the p traps is one of the most misunderstood uh system which is the the most basic system um a p trap it is a, a 90 uh, degree holding water down on the bottom to to where the smells cannot come out of your drains and so any of the open drains that you have a floor drain a, a sink drain a tub drain without that p trap you would be connected to not only your drain system but also the city's drain system and you're going to be smelling all the wonderful odors from that system so i just wanted to make sure we kind of touched on that before we got too deep into everything else well and we've <clears throat> we've got one here and that actually shows this is and like you said the I most don't think basic can see that jason i still don't see it well, for those of you, you can't for those of it. you who are actually just listening to the podcast, uh, Jason is holding. Uh, he's showing it to you. Right? There are yeah, people. He's, he's got a P trap, so uh, yeah, you, you can Google P trap and see what it looks like, or you just, can open up the cabinet in your bathroom or in your kitchen and look underneath it, and that's the part that you see that pipe that goes down and then climbs back up in a U shape, um, and it has. Why do, that they call, why do they call it a P trap if it's a U shape? Yeah, it's always been kind of goofy, but what I understand is that if you turn it sideways, it looks like a P. And that is uh, 
you know, not all things come from a real technical place. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly that's, why it's called a pee it trap. Looks, it's it's a a looks like a pee if you turn it sideways, which a sideways pee trap would be wonder, a big I problem. If, but, I wonder if when they were naming it, they had already named something like a U something. And then when they looked under the sink, they were like, well, that really looks like a U. <sighs> Dang it, we already used that. Yeah. Uh, turn <laughs> it sideways. Wrote it down. It's a P trap. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I was on a job with another plumber from another company who was trying to make it a lot more technical than it is, and he said that the P stood for putrefication. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought, wow, well, I just made that word up. If you were to do a U trap, a U is wider and it holds too much water. The P is much sharper and the water flows through it. So a P trap, people have tried to make p traps multiple times with fittings that have failed majorly or even had them on the side to where they don't even hold water but the p trap is because of how sharp the p is at the top and how much water it holds uh, and if you had a u the top of a U and the other side of a U, they only go up and so it would never have a way to turn and go downstream like it's supposed to and this is also a crucial part of the venting system as matt was saying the water sits in that u so that gases can't permeate through it and come back up through the drain. So you smell it and you get the methane gas in your house. That makes it so that that methane gas is forced up into those atmospheric vents going out the roof. And then when the wind blows outside and things, it blows over the top of that pipe, creating a vacuum, sucking that methane gas up because it has nowhere else to escape. Nice. So that's a very important part. Another misconception is that its whole purpose is to catch things that get down the drain. And that's, that's really not its purpose. It does do that sometimes, and that's more a bonus to what its real purpose is. It doesn't catch very many rings. It doesn't, Most of the no, rings make it all the way It down. amazes me how many rings we get all the way into the street and everything. And we've had times where we had to dig up a driveway <laughs> to get a ring out. You remember? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't catch as much as you think it does. Normally what things will catch on, especially in a bathroom sink, will be just a, before the P-trap, you have the part when you look into the bottom of the sink, you see that it's chrome or brushed nickel or copper or whatever uh that pop-up assembly the part the plunger goes up and down to stop the water or let it flow it has a little arm in it that sticks through to the back to the piece that you pull on the back of the faucet and that little arm protruding into the flow catches hair and things that drape over it and get stuck and that'll build up and build up and build up and then the goop starts to build up on the hair and then you have a stopped up sink and so one thing a lot of people can can try themselves is pulling that p-trap apart and just pulling the hair that's hanging out sometimes that'll make it all go um, and so p-trap is the first and most basic part of the drain system and is required on every single drain in every home some states have what's called a house trap which is a giant one for the whole house utah uses the individual fixture p-trap instead um, and it it's it's crucial it must be there it's the first place everything goes and a lot of people don't realize that for a toilet, the P-trap is actually built in as part of the toilet. When you mm -hmm. look at a toilet from the side, you know, you've got the bowl and then underneath the tank, you've got that, you know, serpentine shape. Uh, looks like a, I don't know, whatever. Well, yeah. but furthermore, the bowl is the first half of the P-trap. Mm. The water you see there is water in the P-trap of the toilet. So it's, the toilet is just a giant P-trap. The toilet is a big, fancy P-trap. Especially if you don't flush. Yeah, yeah. Then it becomes a putrefication trap. <laughs> In interesting. Some toilet manufacturers, when you look at the toilet from the side, it actually looks like somebody um, squatting with a plunger. It doesn't mm. actually look like <laughs> the shape of a pee trap. It acts like it's supposed to and does its job. But it, if you look at it, it looks like somebody squatting with a plunger. Mm. Which Toilets are pretty, actually pretty amazing. There's a lot of engineering into a toilet. A lot more than you would imagine because you've you've got the p-trap you've got the water in it but then you're also it will never overfill as long as the drain is open um it pushes the force through the p-trap and uh, you guys have seen what you flush through it i mean you could flush some pretty gnarly stuff and it gets it through so i've always been kind of amazed that toilets have really been engineered quite well yeah and the design of them hasn't really changed a lot when, once they figured out that that design and you know we'll we'll have an episode where we talk like just about toilets <laughs> if you can imagine that I but i can uh, imagine that I, i'm sure you can <laughs> working with them all the time like i could talk forever about toilets mm -hmm. to break it all down i mean you like jason said you've got pipe you've got fittings fittings meaning you know y's uh 45s 90s um You've got uh, T's for cleanouts um, as far as the drain system, and then P traps, vents, and then 
that what really ties the whole thing together is the proper use of all the fittings, uh, the proper slope, and then the installation of it to where it will stay at that slope for years to come. What you'll see is it's settling, and we'll get into that in a different one, but that really breaks it down to the parts. So I'm glad you mentioned all the fittings because that's when you think of water flowing, it's got to be able to smoothly flow downstream to that main trunk that you talked about. And so if somebody doesn't put the proper fittings in there, you could run into a ton of problems from what may seem like a, a well-installed pipe and then a trained eye can see, well, that's not the actual fitting that's supposed to be there. It's not directional enough or it's a sand tee on its back and doesn't have the flow that it's supposed to have or you know in some cases you get some that break the vent line because the water's up higher than where it ties to the vent and, and so it's using the proper fittings is absolutely crucial it's one of the major things we see wrong in homes um, not even just old new homes old homes is just misuse of fittings you got a lot of t's used as y's and they've tried to put bins out of them and it just doesn't work and you've broke the vent and yeah unfortunately that that's some of the issue with uh you know having people that don't quite like that think they know what they're doing but they don't quite understand it to that level or maybe you know that's one of the issues that you run into sometimes with if you know if you know a guy up the street that just started working with a plumbing company you're like oh cool i got a guy now and you ask him to come over and all of a sudden, like you wouldn't know that as a homeowner. You don't know. I couldn't tell you what, a, if you put a bunch of uh, fittings in front of me, I personally, not being a plumber, would not be able to tell you what a sand trap is. Like I think a golf. Is it a sand trap? Is that what it is? <laughs> sand tee. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Hey, and hey, point there there you go. Again. <laughs> anyway, but uh, you know, and it's really easy to, to mix some of those up sometimes, or it's not easy to mix them up if you know what you're doing, but if you are just thinking like, oh, you're not thinking about that venting line and like doing all of this other stuff. And so, you know, when you are, when you're asking someone to come out and work on your home and you're not, uh, you're not getting a company or someone that has years of experience doing what they're doing, you might be saving a little bit of money up front because you're getting someone that's less experienced. So they're not going to charge as much. Uh, maybe they're doing it at night or on part time, but it really can cause bigger issues. And a lot of times, you know, when we get called out to correct those things, you know, I mean, people, you know, people go to the internet to be brave and I get people all the time that are like, uh, you know, leaving, leaving comments on some of the stuff that, that I post on social and things like that. And I'm not going to stoop down to the level where I'm like calling them out, but like at the end of the day, their work shows what's up. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's, you see a lot of times on, uh, uh, forums like Reddit and those, and there's plumbing categories on there. And just the other day, there was a guy who put up uh, his first big PVC job, and he was so proud of it. And he had Santees on their backs. He had wise breaking vents. He had it was a nightmare. And and that was all the comments were the the few plumbers that are watching this, and they're going just tearing the guy apart. And and it was uh, it's it's funny to see what looks great may not function properly if you don't have everything in the right spot. The advice I've given neighbors and friends every time I lived in a newer neighborhood and everyone was finishing their basement and people would call and ask, you know, what do you think on this, on the plumbing or, or that? And I just tell them, you know, you can use a handyman for a lot of things, but if you're doing your, your plumbing, your electrical, make sure and have someone licensed, Yeah, you know, regardless yeah. who you use. So. And that's not to say all handymen are terrible at it, but the ones that are good at it started as plumbers and decided to branch out, and maybe they're not as good at something else. Um, but it's that jack of all trades, master of none, uh, and and that's the you really want a plumber that just nerds out, goes home, watches YouTube videos, hops on the forums, learns everything they possibly can. Drives my wife crazy how many plumbing videos I've tried to show her on YouTube of how what I think is super cool, she couldn't care less about. Um, but you want the nerd plumber, yeah. Um, I, that's one of the things that I like, and, and here's, I guess, as, as a homeowner, when you're looking into, um, companies, there are quite a few companies out there that as they are starting to branch out into other trades, um, unfortunately their way of doing that is 
they've got a guy that might be a little handy and know a little bit about everything. So they're like, oh, cool. We'll send those calls to him or we'll do this or we'll do that. And one of the things that I really like that any hour uh, services did is that when we went from electrical to plumbing and then HVAC and things of that nature, nature, we hired master plumber to come in that knew exactly what they're doing because we are, your reputation is, is worth too much and you can't, you can send an electrician to unclog a toilet and maybe he might be able to do something simple like that because he knows how to work a plunger better than you. But like, that's not a good, our opinion, you know, not the best philosophy to, to build a business that's going to last, that's going to be able to provide the level of service that you need to provide for homeowners that are calling for those particular problems. And we've even gone one step further and split plumbing into two totally separate departments. You've got your supply or service department, you've got your drain department. They are two completely different monsters. Um, there's a lot more particularities around a drain system in a lot of cases. A pressurized system, you can run pipe anywhere you want and the pressure is going to take it there for the most part. Drains are very specific. We talked a little bit about slope and as you're installing a drain system, you have to be mindful of the slope for every distance, for every foot that I travel, I need a quarter inch of drop in order for this to flow properly. And so if you're doing those long runs, you've got to make sure you're starting at a point where the flow will, will be able to maintain it to the end of that run. Um, and that's one of the things we see a lot of times are even in new homes, uh, you know, the, the big thing to how long does a pipe last? We get that question a lot. And the first caveat to any answer is as long as it's installed properly, and then you can come up with a, a range of years it should last. Um, in new homes, we spend a lot of time redoing new plumbing because they didn't calculate for that run and they don't have the slope. They have a belly in the line or it's got some water standing or it's having to try to climb uphill. And when you're relying entirely on gravity, climbing uphill, now gravity is working against your drain system and pulling everything back into it instead of allowing it to go out like it's supposed to. It's amazing that like new homes that someone is trusting the builder who is then trusting the plumber to like, you know, know enough of what they're doing. But when you're in that new construction situation, sometimes you, you do end up with, that's the training ground mm -hmm. for new apprentices is, you know, building your new house. <laughs> and the, the test is let's run water down. It doesn't go right. Just water. Yeah, it probably will. The new construction plumber's not around 20 years later to see the product of what he didn't do properly. He's not in that house when it backed up later and it's got homeowners in it. He doesn't see that. And so a lot of times one plumber will plumb hundreds or thousands of homes incorrectly, not knowing that each one of those had the same problem 10 years down the road because he didn't get it put in properly. Unfortunately, it's usually like three years. Yeah, 10 years. <laughs> I'm trying to be gracious after the on warranty's it. up. And then <laughs> soon, a day after we get to warranty. go talk to the homeowner and give him the good news. And then occasionally the builder <laughs> and have that conversation. Yeah, but I, that's the thing that I like is when you, when you call any hour services, you're going to get a specialist in that particular trade. And another advantage of going with a company, because when, you know, there even with our technicians, there are varying levels of knowledge and experience. But the reason that you go with a company that has a proven track record is that you've got that company that is willing to stand behind that work. And those guys have the benefit of training from all of the other experience that, that people have and, and things of that nature. Um, were you going to say, well, that? Th that's one of the things I love about our drain department is our guys are trained, uh, every weekly on, on drains and how to use their machine and where to cable from and, and chase. And he, he started in the drains. I, I don't even know how long ago it was, but he, he ran a drain truck for a long time. And now, now he's managing these guys, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, most of our managers are not uh they come from the truck they yeah. come from the, the trenches so been in the field been in the homes and most of us like myself i've been with any hour seven years but i've been doing this for far longer um, and that's what any hour does a really good job of is finding the people who um who they view as the best in their field and bring them in and let take me, care of the customers properly. sure let me get your opinion on this uh because there, there's going to be people that are listening to this all over the country where any hour doesn't serve so if you're outside of utah and you're listening to this and you like that idea how does a homeowner go about picking the right plumber or drain tech or like what how do they know that they're getting someone that is uh gonna do it right because those guys that like you know that guy that you know down the street that just started like technicians just like a lot of things. I mean, a lot of people have egos and 
I have met a lot of technicians that uh, have opinions that they would like bet their entire life savings on whether they're right or not, just because that just seems to be part of being a technician is you've got to have an opinion and not be open to hearing yeah. <laughs> anyone else's. So, so when you ask that guy like, okay, so are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> how does someone, how does someone protect themselves? I think, uh, I think it was Albert Einstein said, if you really understand something, you'll be able to explain it simply. Okay. And, and so if you're talking to a plumber and what he's saying is just wildly confusing and you don't understand anything, there's a good chance he doesn't really understand it as well as he wants you to think either. Um, and so the trust factor in the conversation you're having with them, if they're transparent with you and they're taking you along the process and explaining things in a way that makes sense, that's going to go a long way to helping you understand whether or not they know what they're talking about. And another great way is look at reviews. Let's talk to people. It's, it's one way you can't really go knock on a whole bunch of doors and find out experiences people have had, but you can hop online and see what people are saying about them. Um, and, and, you know, you're going to have average ratings. You're going to have number of reviews. There's a lot of different factors to figure in. Um, but if, if, you know, for the most part, people are really happy with the service, there's a good chance you're going to get somebody good out. I'm uh, almost considered now a professional Amazon shopper. I think I've made. I was waiting to see what was coming after professional there. I think I've done a, a six purchases now on my own. Like, it made it and, you know, gone through it. And I was, I was actually taught by the best, my wife. Like, we've got at least two or three boxes a day coming to our house. I'm not exaggerating at all. Mm. I could show you on our doorbell cam. But um, <laughs> they wouldn't be able to see it. I could show you. Oh, gotcha. I could show you on it. And then if they trust me, I could tell them that right. it's you, true. They, everyone trusts Mike. Right? <laughs> yes. So with that being said, I'm super, I'm the guy, I like to, I like to hold it. I like to shake it. I like to, to stretch it, you know, before I buy it. And, and so I'm looking at, you know, like this whole new online purchase thing and gosh, it's super convenient. You know, you, you click on that thing. And if you're prime like me, I'm a prime Amazon got user, it. you know, and so for those listening, Amazon is not a sponsor of the show. But if you'd like to be, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> call me. No, no, I don't <laughs> care. Like, I'll, I'll let them in on my like if they need my password, I'll let them they purchase some off of it. But I, you know, you have to use your own card, of course. But anyway, so no, you don't share your Prime <laughs> membership. No, no let's, hear let's hear it. Let's hear it. I'd have to ask my wife first. I, she set it up for me. Anyways, we'll get the comments below. We'll put Matt's all of his personal information, social security number, bank account. Uh, I'm trying to get to the. I'm trying to get to it, guys. Well, go right, faster. This is just getting up. I'm getting up to it. All right. So, with that in mind, one thing that's great about Amazon is the reviews. You have the reviews to look through. I go through the reviews. Reviews are, are kind of tricky because you can look at something and be like, wow, five point or 4.8 star rating. And then I look at it like, oh, wait, there's five actual reviews on it. I'll review those, but then it's like, that, that really means nothing to me. I got to have enough reviews. So I've been trained to, to check out the reviews, tying into Chasen's reviews, but um, I wouldn't just rely on reviews. I, I would look at, you know, uh, Better Business Bureau is always a good one to look at everyone's super proud to talk about their licensing. Um, if it's a kind of a, a one man show, I would definitely ask for their license and see what they have because they, they should have that license with them or be able to prove it very easily. So, so if you're, do you got a comment? Well, I was, I was going to uh, jump on that because today's the digital world. You know, we don't, it, it's, it's uh, not as much word of mouth as it used to be. Uh, life is so much more fast paced. Everybody's so busy. Technology's uh, surrounding us and getting better day by day. And just as Matt was saying, you know, you can do some research in a hot minute on how reputable uh, and how long a company's been in business, like searching the BBB, their licensing, Google reviews, Yahoo. I mean, you can you can get it anywhere to save yourself. People still you use know, Yahoo. And, no, they don't. No, no, they no. suck. I, you know, we, well, I guess we're not going to get Yahoo as a sponsor, <laughs> but, but that just Google it, <laughs> but, uh, we're all on the same page in the, uh, but that, that would be the, the definite best way. Uh, and just like Chasen said, if, if you're super confused with anybody in your home and you don't understand what's going on, uh, that's usually a decent red flag. I think to me, it's key cause it's a multi-stage choice process. Obviously you're going to do as much due diligence as you can. You know, how professional do they look online? What's the reputation look like with the reviews and all that stuff? I would say even the next step, I would say that 
when you are communicating with the company at every level, what is the experience that you're having? When you call, what does it sound like? What do the people on the phone sound like? Um, when you are being, when they're dispatching the technician, when, when the technician shows up, what does he show up in? Uh, you know, what kind of detail are they paying to that entire process? And then the biggest key at any point, once you start talking to that particular plumber or the technician that's in your house, at any point, if you feel uncomfortable or something doesn't feel right, ask them to leave. Uh, most plum, especially most plumbers that come out they're they're going to charge some kind of dispatch fee. So they're not usually nowadays charging by the hour. And so you shouldn't have to feel like you're rushing through the process. So, you know, you've got your little dispatch fee, they go through and they give you options or whatever, but feel like you can ask questions. Maybe sometimes ask questions that you don't necessarily know the answer to. Like Jason was saying, how well are they able to educate you? That's another thing that I love is like our whole service philosophy is educate and give options. And that's one of the main reasons that we're doing this show is I just want to share with people what I know. I'm not a plumber. I got my start as an electrician, but being able to associate with so many people that do know what they're talking about, I've got a place that I can go. If I'm like, Hey, I'm having this experience, uh, you know, at my house, what do I do? I've got people that I can trust. And so the whole point of this show is to like, just give back and give information out there and let people know what we know and not, you know, not ask them to have to pay for that information. So anyway, We'll move on from that topic. Jason, you mentioned earlier, um, like talking about how long people ask, how long should the pipes last before we talk about that? Cause you alluded to, it really depends on how it's installed in the material that it's made of. Let's talk about the different materials over the years and what our pipes in our house are made of. Mm -hmm. So inside your home, what you're typically going to see, depending on when your home was built, um, in the seventies was when they started to switch to the plastic pipes that we use today. ABS, uh, PVC being the two most common used. Um, and ABS is also like when, when we say PVC and ABS, they're like, they're plastic. They're plastic. Pipe. Acrylonitrobutadine styrene is what ABS stands for. And it's just a different type of plastic. Um, and, and did you get that Mike? Yes. Acrylonitrobutadine you know, plastate. Yeah. That's pretty much how I said it. <laughs> it's got a lot of letters. <laughs> UHEPS, um, it, TBD. It's just like, um, you know, you go buy a plastic toy it could also be made of ABS or PVC. Um, they're, they're, it's just plastic. Got it. Um, and there's a lot of reasons we use plastic now, most importantly being that it's impervious to water. So it doesn't break down underneath water conditions like some of the older materials, pre-70s and even underground in the 70s, uh, cast iron and galvanized steel being the two most common uh, during a brief period in the 60s when copper was super cheap, you'll see some bigger copper drain lines as well. Really? Yeah, we've pulled out four-inch diameter copper pipes, and it just, it's its weird to see. Next time you do that, bring me a <laughs> section so I can, like, put it in, in, <laughs> in our little that. set here. That he sounds awesome. He just wants to recycle it. He that's just wants to scrap it. <laughs> no, it doesn't have, you can recycle most of that's it. Just give gonna, me a little chunk that I can show. That's how pay the production costs on this podcast <laughs> is by right. scrapping four-inch copper. <laughs> the studio ain't going to pay for yeah. itself. <laughs> Um, but most commonly you'll see galvanized steel and cast iron and water uh, breaking them down is one of the big issues with those, especially galvanized steel, which is more common above ground than cast iron is. Um, the way they make it, it's a certain di um, thickness of the wall and then they're threaded fittings on the end. And rather than those widening out to cut threads into, they just cut the thread into the same thickness of pipe that the rest of it is. And so you have thinner spots where they cut those threads into the pipe and they wear out from water and from abrasive things like running augers through them or from the, the drain chemicals people put in there, we'll just tear them to pieces. Um, and so those are gonna be what you see inside your home most commonly. Um, now, when you get outside, you start seeing other things. Uh, clay pipe, you'll see transite, which is a, an asbestos real similar to a concrete pipe, which is another one of the commons. Um, and then you'll also see what's called Orangeburg. Um, which is hot garbage, basically. Most of them are, but Orangeburg is made of tar paper, the same stuff that you see them put down underneath the shingles on a roof. Uh, and then it's got sawdust and glue in between rolled layers of this tar paper to try and hold it all together. Um, and it, it, the water works on it. The shifts in the ground work on it. Roots can just punch right through the wall of it. If, as it you can literally to poke your finger through it. You can poke your finger through it. It's nasty stuff. And, and so once you hit about 1980 is when you'll see pretty much everything's going to be plastic. 
Yeah, except for the occasional cast iron floor drain. They'd made so dang many of them that when they switched over to plastic, they were using them up into the, the 90s even. Um, and so it's going to be inside your home, you're going to see cast iron galvanized steel if you have an older home, and then you'll see different plastics after that. And the, the galvanized and, and the metallic ones, those are going to break down faster just because it is water. Right, yeah. Water and metal don't usually have a great track history together. And at the time, it was what we had. The technology hadn't come along enough for the plastics to be as available and everything. And so it was the best they had. Right. But that invention not. of plastic is just amazing. Yeah, so much better. Some of the other things that, are, uh, that you wouldn't think about that really uh, take a toll on the pipe is the sewer gases. Mm -hmm. The sewer gases really. really? Oh, yeah. Sewer gases eat the top of the pipe out. Uh, in the main lines, in the city mains, it's a huge problem. Is They're, it because that methane is like like acidic or like it's a, yeah it's a it's an acid it's a the sewer gas it's an acid it eats through concrete pipe it eats through so four when you inch take a big pipe. whiff of like a uh, sewer smell and you you describe it as like ah oh, it's burning my nose yeah it's burning it's the pipe. literally burning the pipe up you should work with chasen and then you'll know what nose burning Heck, feels like mike that's that's what a fart is methane gas gotcha they don't all burn as like you got different Yours. levels of methane. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely have different levels. <laughs> That's why I mentioned chasing. We, we That's put on a ceiling a fan in my it. office. Move it, moving on. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but uh, the other one, electrolysis in a pipe, in a metal pipe, the current will run through a pipe, and, and where that current stops, it grounds out, and it, and it rusts out. And so you'll see a lot of old water lines um, – mostly the ones going outside where the electricians used to be like, Hey man, free ground. I don't know how the electricians look at that, but <laughs> they ground to it. That will, where they ground to it and where the last contact is in the ground, you'll see a big rotted out spot in that pipe also hmm. on that current that he's talking about is, is just made even worse by the static electricity of the water flowing over the top of it. You get the friction in between there and that static will in, in even increase that galvanic corrosion and electrolysis and things like that on bigger pipelines you you have to make it one solid current and then you have to do ground bags to where you you direct that current down into a ground bag so it's not rotting out the pipe mm -hmm. and so hmm. that's that's it's interesting all of the little details that you don't really think of because like when we started out most people think when they're thinking about their drains they think about Oh, I flush, it goes down the drain, like all this stuff happens, but you don't think about all of those little things. So, so let's, let's talk about, um, oh, so, so I mentioned the metallic ones are going to last less. How long, uh, are the plastics going to last? Because you mentioned like, you know, in the eighties, we've got the plastic and that started to be started being used, but now plastics are much more sophisticated now than they used to be. Um, how long, you know, should the plumbing in our house last or what do you what do you guys see i know i know the answer is it depends on a lot of different things but like give us some ideas of how stuff well, should last the pipe itself the plastic pvc it'll, it'll last a lifetime it's a hundred year pipe um the failure we see um being the company going back and looking at failures on it is, is it goes back to the installed incorrectly. Now there is a, a period in the um, 80s where they, they started using um, glued fittings. And so you've got PVC with glued fittings and, and you'll see the glue itself wasn't either a primer glue or something. You're, you're seeing failure in the glued fittings. You, you've got the gasketed fittings um, that typically are outside. Most of the stuff inside is glued, but you've got gasketed fittings where you're not seeing those failures in. Uh, the pipe itself is it's just not going to rot out. They, they've simulated up to 100-year tests on PVC and ABS and have seen no failure whatsoever. Hmm. So, oh, and that cool. even rings true with some of the older pipes. Like the wall of a clay pipe is is really pretty solid yeah, the sewer gases do wear on it it'll it'll pock out and get issues but it's in the joints and in the installation is where you see the bigger issues um, and so we've technology again has really come a long way in the glues and in the gaskets and what they're able to hold up to so, so you on on clay and stuff like that um the it is a solid it is a solid pipe for sure but what what clay also has an issue with is what's outside of it if you if you're if you're a green thumb and you like to plant trees and a lot of things like that you get a lot of pressure from those roots on the outside 
and everybody knows clay doesn't do well too too well under pressure versus a concrete pipe or even a plastic pipe gotcha I, i've been amazed with clay and now there's a lot of reasons why they don't use it today but uh, have you been to pompeii or you know where pompeii is i've not been there have you been to pompeii where have you heard of pompeii I've, yes so I went, I went there, and you're walking through this city that was, I don't know how old. It's a thousand years old, million years old. Who knows how old it is? Probably closer to Do a million. Do you know what Pompeii is? Yeah, <laughs> I was there. I just looked at all the sides. You I know, really been here, and you don't did know you anything about the plaques? It. I did not read the plaques. I just looked <laughs> through and like, wow. Anyway. But there was old clay lines mm-hmm. in that city still in the weather in the same shape they were however long ago. Clay pipe itself is genius you know what i mean that the, that material now it's brittle um there's no really good way to seal it and you typically are, are replacing or re lining or, you know rehabbing those pipes but man that pipe itself is pretty cool yeah um let's talk about <clears throat> excuse now, me now we did kind of skip over your how long yeah i was actually that. yeah but are you coming back I, I was yes. Oh, hey, so let me go help ahead you. and segue. Um, you'd, make so. a, you'd make a good podcast host. <laughs> um, again, with the as long as it was installed correctly, um, but the older ones, the, like like Matt said, plastics could be a hundred year pipe. Um, but the older ones, thirty to forty years is a, a pretty standard. Uh, what we see, and being that when we stopped using them, any of them that are still there are past that forty year mark. Yeah, and so if it's still a metal pipe, if it's still a clay pipe, it's outside of its typical lifespan and been on borrowed time for a while. The thing that's always amazed me with the underground portion of the, the plumbing is how oblivious people are that thinking it's different than anything else in their house, that everything has a lifespan, you know? How many times have you roofed your house? You know, how many, how many times have you replaced your furnace? You know, how many times have you replaced a water heater? That the... the plumbing that it was put in pre 80s is no different and um you just don't see it so were you gonna say something Justin? well there's uh plum- plumbing pipe pipe itself uh when you itself will last a while and water you know just water like chasen was saying plastics impervious to water um usage is a big deal on life expense expectancy so uh, chase was saying 30 to 40 years is uh, you know, generally what they last, and, and that that's that's totally true. Uh, but if you're if you're the type of person that's always putting down harsh chemicals, cleaning chemicals, uh, certain cleaners, and things like that, that really starts to deteriorate and lower the life expectancy of any kind of pipe, not not just uh, concrete, not just plastic, not just anything. It it really starts to wear and uh, um, actually starts to. Uh, show wear and tear years earlier than that 30 to 40 years Hmm. so really the usage of it and and what you as an individual are putting down a drain makes a big difference and go ahead the other thing with just the lifespan of pipe in general is the pvc pipe that you're talking about we're talking the pipe itself is not being destroyed but that's still in the sense of we talked earlier the the slope and the vent and the proper fittings and that's in the perfect world that all of this was installed properly you don't have a joint where the glue um, wasn't the proper glue and you have roots coming in and, and then you've got water coming out you know i mean that that's in the sense that the pipe itself will but it all still based on the new fittings that we have do help the the installed properly has to be done and so well and that even goes to just not just the fittings and things like you're saying but also in backfill especially with underground if you've got a big rock sitting against that pipe the weight of that and the pressure of that will push into it as well so it goes back to installation so let's let's move on from this and let's talk a little bit about maintenance um you know like uh matt you mentioned that you're surprised how many people don't realize that things have a lifespan. Um, but like, let's talk about the maintenance. Cause I think a lot of people don't, we don't think about the, the plumbing or the drains in our house because 99% of the time they work. We only think about it when there's a problem, when there's a backup or it's not flowing the way that it should. Or maybe, you know, when we're shaving or brushing our teeth and we're running the water and we see the water like 
fill up in the little sink a little bit more and it's not draining as fast as it should shower. Right. And so let's talk about maintenance and what are some things that people can do to, uh, maintain their, their drains. So there are parts of the system that are not meant to require any maintenance. And that's like the sewer line. And some of those bigger components aren't meant to be maintained at all. Assuming again, in, installed properly and whatnot. And, but as far as the things in the home, the bathroom sink, the shower, those kind of things, there's a lot of things that you can treat drains with uh, enzyme products, bacterial products that are basically going to live inside the pipe and begin to eat at that organic material that builds up in there. Um, the, you know, the soaps and things are all based with more organic material. So it eats them and gets them out of there. The pipe being an inorganic material is safe with those enzyme type products. One, uh, of the great false advertising schemes of our day is, uh, those chemical drain cleaners that say safe for all pipes. It's really not safe for any pipes. Um, and so it's, it's an acid. Uh, and acid eats things, uh, pipes included. And so the, if it burns your nose when you smell it, kind of like methane, if it burns your nose when you smell it, it's burning your pipes when it goes in there as well. So are there, <clears throat> excuse me, are there some plastics that the that doesn't do? Because, I mean, I, from watching Breaking Bad, I know that if you're going to dissolve a body <laughs> I was just using an acid, that. <laughs> you, you don't put it in your tub. Right, you put yeah. it in a, in a, in a plastic. plastic tub. And, or not a, not a plastic bin of yeah, some sort. Yeah. Some of them will hold up better. Yeah, but you also have to remember that like fittings, glue, all those other things mm. are not going to hold up as well as the pipe. That itself. tub had no glue fittings or anything. It was just <laughs> well, the a tub, cast iron. I think iron was cast thing. iron. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, didn't he use a blue barrel when he ended up? Oh, when yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. That like blue one, barrel was one solid piece mm -hmm. yes got it yeah those rubber made big garbage cans mm -hmm. and even the different type of plastic some of them will still break down some of them won't um, and that's you know we talked about abs and pvc both being different types of plastic and i don't know which one of those would dissolve a body better uh, but the different plastics will let's react differently <laughs> anyone well, that has experience uh you know please don't a, call in no leave it leave a comment we won't turn you into <laughs> anyone <laughs> the other problem is bringing up promise? the fittings in the pipe. You, you have mostly PVC or ABS plumbing p material right now, but there are still cities out there that are morons that use cast iron. <laughs> to be unnamed. They still require cast iron fittings to be used. Really? And so, especially you, clean outs and things. You clean outs, bins, you have to use cast iron fittings. And so, you'll have PVC on each end of those fittings, but you still have cast iron. Why would they do that? that I, if there's so much science, if you find the answer. We don't to that. have enough time for this show for me to vent on that. <laughs> the, the bureaucracy of, is the, of I, government. I have went the common sense way with cities. I've taken. Uh, the information on the fittings to them, and I've shown them old, rotten fittings. Uh, I've went the angry way to them. I, I haven't gotten them to budge. No, and really what we get from is it's the way we's all, we've always done it, and it just they won't grow. Orem, here in Orem City, was that way until just about uh, three years ago. They were requiring cast iron. Why they just they, finally changed it. Why did they change it? One of the older guys from the city retired, and they mm. were able to. The way they've always done it. Cutting the ends off the ham, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so maintenance. Chemical drain products as a maintenance is not is not a good idea. Now, the, let's can, talk about the difference between make, what were you going to say? I was just going to hit on that because a lot of people love those, those chemical drain cleaners. And something that we need to think about is uh, plumbing has been around a lot longer than chemical drain cleaners. Chemical drain cleaners are an afterthought of, you know, a, a problem in a drain, uh, things that we didn't see years ago. And so they, the plastics that we use in plumbing, they, they're, they're not built to hold a, a dissolving body or chemicals like that. So yeah, the, the, the plastics that are used in plumbing today, those chemicals will slowly eat those away and ruin those. So when we're talking about different plastics that we can use in the world, those stronger plastics aren't what we use in plumbing. Yeah. There are people that, that on, a, on a regular basis, they take the, the, the drain, you know, the drain products, the chemical products, and they actually put it down the drain because they think that that is keeping it 
going. And if you've got that big of an issue with the drains, uh, maybe it, from a maintenance standpoint, you go the route that Chasen was talking about with some type of enzyme product, like a, a bio one or a bio clean or something like that, where it's a, a living enzyme that is feeding on those. And that will, and the, the other advantage of going that route versus the drain is that heavy chemical. It's usually, if it is keeping the drain open, it is boring a hole through the bottom of the clog. It doesn't mm -hmm. like do anything for any of the buildup right. on the upper part of the pipe. And, but the enzyme, it will actually eat up, um, on the different things. So when a lot of times it maintenance comes too late and the, the damage is done, so to speak. And you've got just so much buildup in a pipe that it, it's just fighting too far uphill. And so then you do something to get it clean first, a hydro jetter, for instance, a pressure washer made for the inside of a pipe is basically what a hydro jetter is. And it will actually clean it, scour it out. And then you start maintaining it with an enzyme to help keep it clean. And um, that will still depend, like Jesse mentioned earlier on use, uh, how much is going down it. Uh, another great false advertising scheme is garbage disposals. They are great. They serve an awesome purpose. Um, but just remember, whatever we put down the garbage disposal is then going to end up in the pipe below the garbage disposal. Um, and so people using too much, uh, using their, relying on their disposal too much will clog their pipes quicker than those who put the extra food in the garbage can instead. Hmm. So um, running just hot water down the, the, the drain. <laughs> Tell me what that does. Nothing. You, you giggle. <laughs> it, it gets it Warms six the pipe inches up. farther. Yeah. <laughs> if that. Well, My getting... wife was doing that Ugh. and I had no idea. She, I see her dumping grease down the sink mm. with the sink going. And I'm like, what? what are you doing she's like oh don't worry about it i've got hot water running i'm just like oh well, and the melting temperature of most of those greases is about 140 degrees and the water coming out of your water heater you're even if you have it all the way up you're getting about 140 but it's only 140 as soon as it comes out of the faucet after just a few seconds of getting into the pipe or being exposed to the 70 degree air in your house it's colder than 140 so it's no longer melting any grease almost instantly and just from your kitchen sink to the sewer main saying you make it that far your average is about 75 feet of pipe you're going through you know well i just want for all of those homeowners that are listening that do that i feel you <laughs> hot, hot water we, we we rinse the dishes off with it before we put them in the dishwasher we're like oh it dissolved it off the plate why wouldn't it dissolve it off of the uh, pipe so like i get i get you i get you but that's why we have the panel of experts well, we talked and a little bit about earlier about the rush of water that pushes things out yeah. straight out of the faucet yeah it's going to help get it off of the plate but not just from the temperature from the rush it's coming out of there at you know nine gallons a minute and you flowing. realize you're lifting the plate right up to the yeah. nozzle to get those you off get, you or, don't have or if that. you're like me you've got the little button on your faucet that makes it a higher pressure to and you're not really melting it off there you're blasting it off there and then it gets into the pipe and the blasting's gone and it stops and settles in the pipe i'm just gonna believe what i believe you're I'm allowed gonna... to be stupid all you want okay thanks but back on <laughs> on the maintenance of a, of a drain system i mean there there are some areas like your your drains your tub drains your sink drains those are going to be your p traps you're, you're going to pull or or clear those out here and there um kitchen lines especially with this the way we use them now uh everyone's got a couple garbage disposals going down tons of food and so you've got the the, the pills uh, eggshells that kind of stuff that gets left behind so you will end up jetting and and maintaining those as far as any of the other um, main lines which we would call them it's you know you've got that big trunk that we talked about and then the little branches coming off any of those main lines with the proper slope and the proper ventilation, those things don't need to be maintained whatsoever. Okay. What are the most common uh, reasons that people, like the service calls that you get for, for drains, what are the most common things you're seeing? The one common thread to all of them is water's not going down where it's supposed to, or it's coming up where it's not supposed to. Um, and floor drains with water coming up them or not going down them are very common. And one of the misconceptions is that that floor drain is, uh, a lot of people refer to it as the main drain, um, and it's actually just a floor drain. It's more than anything, it's just an emergency drain for if something floods, it has somewhere to go. Um, in, in older homes, most of the time, that's tied to the pipe from the kitchen sink. And so it may be manifesting at a floor drain, but it's actually a problem with the kitchen sink line 
with the buildup and the goop and all that in there, stopping the water from going through. Others are the bathroom sinks, the bathtubs, the hair builds up in there. Yeah, we see that a lot on, on our schedule. We have a ton of people with those issues happening. And some of the things you can do to prevent that is just those simple little nets. You can get them at Walmart or anywhere that you put over the drain that catches some of that hair. As your head is underneath the, the shower flow, it's pulling hair off of your head constantly. Yeah, I mean, that hair is then going to the drain and it will build up in there. But if you put those nets or something like that there to catch it, you can keep it from getting in the drain to a large degree. And that's one maintenance or prevention thing you can do. Um, but I'd say kitchen sinks, floor drains, and floor drains, and then oh, old sewer lines having issues are, are most common. So not clogged toilets. That's not a common one. It, it is common, but not the most common. Most people can clear a clogged toilet with a plunger. Sometimes that blockage is a, a little beefier than a plunger can handle. Uh, I chose <laughs> my words carefully. I chose my words carefully. Uh, and so then, then you go in with something that'll actually break the beef up and, uh, and push it down the line. Um, but, uh, you guys, okay. Are we going to ask my new saying? You, I'm going to go you, drop some beef. Okay. <laughs> I just go ahead and take out. I have a feeling the, the plumbing podcast are going to have a different, different kind of humor. We're going to have to rate them to 5419. We need to <laughs> a PG 13 rating. Um, but yeah. And so toilets, they, they do clog. A lot of times it is, uh, homes with young kids. I have one of those homes. I have pulled a hot wheels car out of my own toilet. Um, and those will get in there and water will flow over it just fine. But then you start putting enough toilet paper and that Hot Wheels car sitting in that giant P trap of a toilet, like we talked about, will catch that. Um, so sometimes it's a matter of pulling a toilet off or in worst case scenarios, sometimes, I don't know how, but the, the little springy part that holds a toilet paper on the toilet paper holder, those are commonly dropped into a toilet when you're changing out the toilet paper. And somehow they frequently will get into the the arm of the toilet and wedged with that spring and there's no way to get it out and hmm. then sometimes a clogged toilet becomes a new toilet because you can't unclog some of those things hmm. interesting um all right so we're, we're going to move on to our final segment which is the in the house q a uh, in this part of the show we answer questions that you submit online uh, if there's any questions that you would like answered, if you're listening, go ahead and leave a comment wherever you're watching or listening to this episode. Uh, you can search any hour services on any of our socials and just message us if you'd like. Uh, we'll select some of your questions and we'll answer them on the show. First question comes from Denise. Uh, I'd like to know if store-bought drain cleaners are safe for PVC pipes. What kind of pipes are they safe for? Or is it better to use a plunger slash pipe snake. Now we talked about this a little bit earlier, but go ahead and answer uh, Denise's question for her. Yeah. The, the best method to remove a blockage is always going to be just that to actually remove the blockage, whether that's a snake, uh, sometimes a plunger will be able to push it to where it can flow out. And um, so it will always be snake or plunger being a better method than any of those chemicals. Like we talked earlier about the wear and tear from those chemicals, but also because as you mentioned, Mike, it doesn't usually get the whole thing. Um, whereas if you can remove it with a snake or something, it will be far more effective. Yeah, and sometimes if it's blocking it, uh, if it's if it's large enough to block the thing, sometimes getting a snake down the line will actually break it up enough that it can like mm -hmm. uh, go down the line or open it up. Yeah, so then, enough that you've got the water then because th it's meant to self scour and like uh, clean itself. Yeah, an easy way to look at it is that the system besides the areas we talked about just earlier, the maintained ones, it should all work unless there's an object that shouldn't be in there or a problem in the line uh, where it was installed incorrectly or, or just a problem. Got yeah, it. Water runs downhill unless something tells it it can't. Okay. Uh, let's see. Melissa says, what is the best way to unclog a drain? Uh, like we just touched on, um, depending on the drain and the clog, it may be something you can do yourself by pulling that P-trap apart, pulling it out of there, pulling some hair out of the bathtub. It's gross. It doesn't gross me out in anybody else's house, but in my own house, it just, for some reason it's different. Uh, you know, I'm not supposed to have that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so some things you can just physically pull out with a pair of pliers or your fingers if you're real brave. Um, but some clogs are going to be down further than you can get to that way. And I mean, the easy answer is call any hour uh, we'll come out and we'll unclog it for you. Um, but, uh, snaking things like that are going to be the best way. And sometimes that even won't be enough and you'll be hydrojetting 
Sure. I think also it kind of depends on what drain it is yeah, as absolutely. far as like what the steps you would take. Cause if it's a kitchen sink or a bathroom sink and it's like just draining slow, I think taking the pipes apart underneath and cleaning them definitely helps it's a, great a ton. place to start. Yeah. Um, the, if it's a toilet, I would start with a plunger. Uh, if it is a bath bathtub or shower, uh, you know, you can't get to the pipes underneath it. So most of the time, uh, but so what I would, I would recommend is they make a, uh, it's a, it's a weird little product. It's a long, thin plastic piece that have like little teeth on it that you can, you know, try and fish down the, the line. It's it. a, yeah, the zip it type of thing where you zip it. If you're watching, <laughs> give us a call. You can be a sponsor of the show. This is a free one, um, but you can you can fish down that line and see if it can reach and get hair or anything that's there at the surface, and that can pull some things out that way. Uh, but yeah, if it's for the average homeowner, if those basic things uh, don't work, then you're probably going to be in a situation where you need to you know call a plumber that you trust to to come out and and take care of that uh, slow drain or that blockage for you. Hopefully, the information we've been talking about will help you. Um, as you're interacting with them. Okay. Uh, next question comes from Wendy. Why does the drain in my shower collect the hair so quickly? Well, Cause it's falling out quickly. <laughs> Wendy, we do not know how fast your hair is falling out. Uh, well, and that's, it's true. And it falls out quicker than any of us realize we, you, you know, people have a full head of hair and it's still falling out and it's just, it breaks off. It's just a natural wear and tear to hair and it gets into that drain and if there's nothing there to catch it, a screen or something, it's going to get caught on certain parts of that drain system. So, uh, for instance, if you're looking in your bathtub and there's the two parts there, there's the drain in the floor of the bathtub where the water goes down. Inside that drain, there's usually uh, a cross piece of metal there, and that's just a place for hair to drape and get caught. Um, and that, in a way, it's a good thing that it gets caught there because otherwise it could get further and become a bigger problem. That other piece to the drain system in the bathtub that's up on the front wall of the tub doubles as a vent overflow, or I guess triples as a vent, an overflow, and a clean out access point. So you can pull that little cover off, and then you have access into the pipe past where the water goes down in the bottom. And uh, sometimes you can reach it with those little barbed things you're talking about. Um, sometimes it's a little deeper and needs an auger. But the hair builds up in there because there are things there to catch it. Um, and so it builds up and you can try and keep as much out as possible is the best way to go. If you're, uh, <clears throat> so mine used to do that a lot. And then I found out that uh, my wife was letting her hair, her hair that was falling out or whenever she'd wash her hair, go down the drain. And so every, every, every uh, female is usually different. If you dye your hair, your hair falls out a little faster usually if you don't. Uh, but my, my wife, she usually washes uh, her hair thoroughly, you know, three to four times a week. But what I actually had her start doing was uh, every time she runs her fingers through her hair, she takes that hair that's coming out and just puts it on the wall of the shower. When we're done showering, we throw it in the trash. Otherwise, my shower was backing up monthly. And now, uh, I don't think I've had a shower back up in over a year because we, we, we stopped letting my wife's hair go down the, the drain. So hmm. just a little pointer for anybody. Well, and I also think that you have to be more cognizant of it the longer your hair is. Because mm -hmm. if you've got short hair, it's not going to get caught up on those things. It's going to flow right over it. But if you think about a spaghetti noodle, you know, if, if it drapes over the top, it's going to stay there. And then all of a sudden it just kind of compounds that way. Uh, and I think that kind of rolls into our next question. Why does my bathtub consistently have to be cleaned of my hair? Is there a way to prevent that besides shaving my head? That comes from Amberly. And so, um, so yes, all the things that we, we just talked about there, uh, a strainer in the, you know, in the, in the drain itself, doing the, the things that Jesse talked about as far as like trying to do what you can to prevent the hair from going down the drain. It doesn't, it's not a bad thing that you're losing your hair. Shaving your head is a surefire way to go. It's the method I tend to take. For, for those of you who can't see, <laughs> Jason shaves his head. And I actually, when this question came up, I was thinking Jesse was the one that should answer the hair question. <laughs> mm. It's true. It My hair is not falling out though, so. Well, every, mm -hmm. we should be clear. Your hair falling out doesn't mean you're going bald. Everyone's it just hair means falling some out. hair's falling out. Yeah. And bald people's hair falls out a little differently. Well, than, it does know. until it isn't there to fall out anymore. That's true. Why don't you just keep yeah. falling out kind of in the same little area right there? You you're that, getting old and going bald. You got yeah, that P-trap thing going on. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we've, the show has gone off the rails, uh, but that, that's it for today's show. Uh, thanks so much for listening to this episode of In the House. We release new episodes every Tuesday. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Uh, do me a favor. If you've got some time, go to iTunes and leave us a review on the show. I'd like to thank my guest, Matt, Jesse, Chasen, uh, for being on the show. And a big thanks to uh, people behind the scenes. We've got uh, Austin in the background making sure that we sound as good as we can. So thanks, Austin. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Any Hour Services, visit anyhourservices.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to In the House. Music.